Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So coming off of yesterday's really high roll, high reward hype deck list, we have one that's been around for quite a while. It saw a lot of popularity, then it kind of died off. Today we're going to be covering the Sarah Miracle. Now the Sarah Miracle is like a death wave deck. It aims to be extremely consistent at pushing a relatively decent amount of power out onto the board, but it doesn't have as high of a high roll ceiling. And so this deck isn't going to be able to go toe to toe with absolutely every deck out there. But what it can do is it can compete with their low rolls very, very well. And so running through the deck list really quickly. First up, we have Blade. Blade is a way to discard one of our cards. A lot of this deck is going to operate on getting a small power push onto strong guy at the very end. Blade by himself is already a pretty powerful one cost card and it helps to serve us get rid of the rest of the cards in our hand. We have Angela for any kind of deck list that pushes a lot of power out onto the board. Angela is going to be absolutely critical. Angela by herself is a 2-1. Once you drop three cards in the lane, she's a 2-7, which for a two cost card is phenomenal. And then we have Mojo. Mojo in this list is going to be pretty decent. He's going to either help make sure that the opponent doesn't cap out a lane because they don't want us to get that extra six power. Or if we drop him after they cap out a lane, we can easily sneak in that extra six power on our last turn play as a way to steal that lane away that they may have been anticipating that they had won. And then we have Okoye. If we can drop Okoye on curve, she's essentially going to offer a two cost six power presence onto the board for the rest of the game. And then we have Scarlet Witch. I am hesitant about Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch offers a lot of really good utility, but there are times where she can stab you in the back and you lose the game because of it. Now, more often than not, with how many locations we have, she's going to, if you use her onto a lane, most of the time it's going to be beneficial, but not always. And so if it comes down to dropping her or another two cost three or four power card, and I don't necessarily need to change a lane, sometimes I hold her back and let her be discarded. Other times she's going to come in absolutely critical. So if they lock down a lane with storm and you just don't have the power push to put onto the board at that time, you can change that stormed lane with Scarlet Witch, and then you can extend your upside in that lane. And then we have Calling Wing. Calling Wing is going to discard the lowest cost card from our hand. So a lot of times this is going to either be our blade or just a card on the last turn so that we can finish getting rid of our entire hand to trigger the strong guy bonus. Plus, at a two cost, four power, she's a pretty decent power push as well. And then we have Mysterio. Mysterio is a two cost, five power card, and he creates two Mysterio tokens onto the board. Now, the best thing about Mysterio is that one, he creates those mind games for your opponent. But two, each of those tokens are going to trigger Bishop's ability to buff up. And even if it's the fake one, it will trigger Angela's ability to get plus two on her in that lane. And so we can see quite a bit of utility from Mysterio in this list. And he offers a little bit of mystery at the same time. And at two cost, five power, even if you drop him on the last turn, he's incredibly valuable. And then we have Bishop. Even though they took Bishop down one power, it doesn't, it doesn't really stop him in the lists that he was already good in. And so with this list, if you drop him and then just Mysterio, that's all of a sudden a three cost, four power. And then of course, you're going to have a lot of other cards that you drop throughout the game. So if you drop him on curve or close to curve, you're going to get quite a bit of utility from your Bishop. And then we have Swordmaster. Swordmaster is a good power push. If we drop him after we drop Sarah, he's only a two cost and he comes in at six power. Plus, he helps us get rid of the rest of the cards in our hands so that we can trigger our strong guy bonus. And then we have Maximus. Maximus is much better in the post magic meta. So whenever you had to worry about potentially dropping Maximus and then they extend the game with magic on six, you had to wonder if it was worth that potential draw that you were giving the opponent. But now that they can't do that, you're relatively safe to drop Maximus on turn six as a way to either ruin their strong guy, ruin their Dracula card, or just as a really high power card to drop on the board. And if you partner this with Sarah, it's only going to be a two cost. And so you can do something like a Maximus, a Swordmaster, and then one other card for a really big last turn play. And then we have strong guy. He's not as strong as he used to be, but he's still pretty strong. At a four cost, four power, initially he's just okay, but if we can get rid of our entire hand, he becomes a four cost, 10 power, which is phenomenal. And then if you happen to have Onslaught Citadel that you play him in, you get the additional six as well. There's a lot of good utility from Strong Guy in this list. And then finally we have Sarah. Sarah is going to reduce the cost of all of the cards in your hand by one down to a minimum of one. 
That is why we don't run very many one cost cards in this list. We run a lot of two cost cards and three cost cards. Sarah enables some really crazy last turn plays, and that's where a lot of this power comes from. So even if the opponent has a really strong last turn finisher, if we can push our power into all three lanes, if they really heavily lean onto one lane rather than spreading out their power, a lot of times we can get the upside out of being able to drop all of our cards towards the end of the game to trigger all of our bonuses, trigger all of our buffs, and then push a pretty good amount of power onto the board in the process. And that is the rundown of the deck list. There, ha there has been a lot of discussion around this type of meta. I know that the snap.fan discord has some conversation going around a Sarah shell. And then this deck archetype has been around for a long time. But for the most part, it has avoided most of the nerfs that we've seen recently. And so in my opinion, it's begun to kind of creep up in how effective and efficient it is to run this list. You're not going to be able to beat your really strong Wong ongoing decks. You're not going to be able to beat the really strong Omega Red decks. It doesn't have counters for those in this list, but what it does have is a consistent power push. If they don't hit their high roll, or if you're going against a combo deck and they just don't hit their combo, a lot of times you have the ability to push so much power onto the board that you can capitalize on a lot of that upside. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so next up we have Mod and if they start having like the perfect the perfect draw line, we, we probably know that they're they're hacking with their mod powers. So they play Iceman, which hits our bishop, which is not terrible. It's not great, um, but it's not necessarily the worst either. I think here we're going to go ahead and drop our Mysterial onto the board. It's very unlikely that we play Bishop at four cost. He just feels a little bit too late game. And so I think we're just going to push our power onto the board. We start kind of stacking some power either into Kiln or the other location, depending on where we think their power push is going to be. Ooh, so the peak is an interesting one. Now we can actually play Bishop again, which is weird. Um, that's That was not anticipated. Um, but we can play Bishop again. He gets the upside of the inversion, and the Iceman actually now benefits him, which is a weird interaction that I've never thought about. So let's go with Bishop. Let's go with Mojo. I think we should have the kill location pretty decently locked down and they play a kingpin into the peak so that tells me we probably need to flood that one by the end of the game at some point point. and so here let's go with a strong guy that gives us a decent power push i don't think we actually need to cap out kiln i don't think they're going to cap out the kiln location either and so they play a juggernaut but we didn't play anything there so that's okay um, our bishop is going to continue to grow we do have the real mysterio here um, so that's going to offer us an extra five power push into the kiln location and so now we have couple of choices we can make so with the peak colleen wink and maximus both become kind of lackluster um so i think what we want to do is we can drop our scarlet witch into the peak we can drop our sword master into Hala. that's going to discard one of these cards we will most likely just play whatever we draw next turn and kind of forego getting the strong guy bonus Ooh, so the green goblin really hurts there that's not that's not great <laughs> Um, so then we change it. It is Kunlun, which is also not great. Um, so we do have Maximus as our last card, unfortunately. We could potentially get there if we end up getting rid of all of our cards, but we, we just don't have the push. Uh, we just don't have the oomph. Had this been a regular Maximus, that would have been pretty decent. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try. They don't know where our real Mysterio is. They can pretty safely assume that it's over here, but they don't know that for sure. We do know that everything is capped out in Kunlun. They're not going to be able to do like an arrow or anything to pull cards over. They don't have their Juggernaut. Um, I don't know that they have the reach. They could do something like a Magneto maybe to pull one of the three cost cards out of one of these lanes. But we don't know which one it would grab, do we? Um, it would grab Bishop, right? No, it grabs the Green Goblin, which gives us the lead in Kun Lun. Having, having the restricted number of spaces made their Magneto play feel pretty inconsistent. Um, we got lucky that it did not pull our Bishop out. Had it pulled our Bishop out, we would have lost this lane. We would have tied over here. And then it would have came down to a tiebreaker in this one, and I don't know that we would have won it. But let's go ahead and jump into the next one and see if we can keep the good games going. All right, so next up we have Sky Sander. In our starting hand, we don't really have any of our early game or our ramp cards. We're hoping to draw into like an Angela, a Bishop. Strong guy's good if we can draw into Sarah as well. Um, but let's go ahead and throw Mojo onto the board. 
we might do Scarlet Witch into the Dream Dimension just because paying one additional power cancel. We, we're not going to be able to drop our Sarah. Um, it, it, especially with either us with us either wanting to drop Sarah or drop a lot of cards on that turn. Um, it really starts prohibiting us quite a bit. And so let's actually change the Dream Dimension a turn early. If we don't, Mirror Dimension may pick it up, and then even if we change one, there will be another. Um, and so I think we need to preemptively change it here. And so it changes into Tinker's Workshop. We have one additional energy next turn, which I think we'll be able to put to use. If Mirror Dimension comes up, that'll be an, another additional energy. And then Crimson Cosmos is a little bit difficult for us. All we have really is the... Uh, the strong guy, but I think we play our bishop onto the board. I think we... Oh, it took over the Crimson Cosmos. Unfortunate. Well, in that case, I think we need to save, save our spaces for our strong cards, right? Oh my gosh, that is a rough one. And so we only have strong guy or Sarah that can fit into the Crimson Cosmos. We do draw into Sarah, so we can at least stack a couple here. We might even get lucky and be able to get rid of all of our cards if we draw into either a Calling Wing or a Blade. We might be able to get the Strong Guy bonus to trigger. And maybe we have a shot. Most likely no, <laughs> but maybe. They did the Forge onto a Hood, which is kind of strange. Um, so we know they're going to have at least six power that they can push here. Um, I don't think as long as we can... One, two... And we don't have enough space to play. Um, otherwise, we would be able to trigger it, um, but we don't. So in that case, if we do this, this, and this, that would be a five power Angela. It'd be the almost. It'd be pretty much the exact same thing as us doing Mysterio here. And then we'll get rid of one of these two. If we had another one other space to play, we could easily get rid of our last card. Um, we could discard our bishop. Our strong guy would trigger. I'm guessing they didn't have any big power push to push over here. Um, we were going to, I think, absolutely win the Tinkerer's Workshop. This lane became a question. If they had America and America Chavez, they could at least tie this lane. But then we were going to have such a big power push here that we might have overcame the deficit. They did retreat. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. See if we can keep getting lucky. Maybe we start easing into the snaps and trying to push our advantage so that we can gain some more cubes. With scope, because so far we've been getting like ones and twos games, and we want to and we want to be able to climb a little bit quicker. All right. So next up we have Karsten. In our starting hand we have our strong guy. We have our Sarah. We have a Koye, which is going to help us ramp into some cards. We also have a turn seven. Then we have Blade, so that if, if we need to discard a card, I think with a seventh turn, I don't think we will need to. Um, but I think we should be relatively okay. So let's go ahead and snap here. I, the kiln is fine. If we draw into Scarlet Witch, we'll probably change it. Um, otherwise, we just let it roll. We'll play Bishop in that lane, and then we can maybe play Strong Guy on the, in there on four, which would end up being a pretty big power push. Akoya is going to offer us a, a lot of extra power across the game, especially with it being extended to a turn seven. Okay, so Los Diablos base may actually kill the kiln or it kills our extra turn. Um, either way, I think we're fine. We have a pretty good setup. We have the bishop, we have strong guy, Sarah, and then we can dump the rest of our cards. Um, so no matter what it kills here, I think we should be okay. Ooh, and then I believe this is a human and they have the black and white, the Incafi uh, variant, which is really, really nice. Okay, so it does kill Limbo, so we are only going to turn six. But that means that this is the last turn for cards to be played here. We could either play Sarah a turn early because of the wave, or we can play Strong Guy. Strong Guy has a, a higher max potential, but Sarah will allow us to flood cards on the board. And so, I don't know. I don't feel, I don't feel solid about it, but I am going to go with Sarah. Um, just because it makes the rest of our turns or our follow-up turns a little bit easier. Ooh, so they have an Agatha. So it is an Agatha all along. That is why they have the wave. So we should have a pretty uh, decent uh, kiln location. And so there no more cards can be played here. We should have this one locked down. And so now we just need to lock down this other one. And I think we can do that relatively easily. Um, two, three, four. I think we just play the Angela and the strong guy. I think we play that, we leave it as is, and then if we need to shift power, we do have a really big power push that we can try to overcome the ruins with. Um, but I think we should be fine. I don't want to push too much power out on the board and then just put all of our eggs in one basket. They have the uh, the Taskmaster, which copies the Agatha, which is pretty decent. Um, that's a pretty decent Agatha play. 
So we're going to have the six power bonus here. We can do Maximus. We can do Mojo. Um, and then we can throw the rest of our cards on the board. If they fill this one up, we'll get an extra six power. If not, we have the extra six from Strong Guy, the eight from Maximus, and then the three. And those are all going to trigger our Taskmaster as well. And because we didn't flood the board last turn, they do have initiative, which is good. Um, that means that they can't hit us with like a Shang-Chi. I don't think they run a Shang-Chi in this list, but just in case they do, do we hold a Scarlet Witch? That way we don't get the Strong Guy bonus until everything flips and, and reveals so that their Shang-Chi can't destroy our Strong Guy before it even gets going. I mean, we're not going to compete for the Ruins unless we just got really, really lucky. If they did an Arnold Zola, maybe. That would be 17 power here. And so this is one, two, three. Ooh, I think. But if they did an Arnold Zola there, we would win this one. I think we would lose this one regardless. I don't know. Um, I think we lock this in. Um, just in case they have the Shang-Chi, we're gonna, we're gonna hold Scarlet Witch for now. So an Enchantress is interesting. Um, no longer will we have the Strong Guy bonus. I don't think we can overcome their power anymore. We might because of the mojo. The mojo just may barely, it does. The mojo just barely gets us there. We win by two in Los Diablos base because we had such a large power push with Maximus and with mojo into the Angela lane. Huge, um, absolutely huge. And so that one is a four cube game. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. All right, next up we have Mr. Brightside. In our starting hand, we have our Bishop, our strong guy. So we have one of our ramp cards if we can draw into angela here that'd be almost perfect or sarah would be really good as well um scarlet witch isn't as great maybe we go ahead and throw it onto the board um that way we push some power it's an unknown amount but they have their angela we do not have our angela unfortunately so it turns into mojo world so we know that we're going to cap this one out or we should be able to cap this one out so that's not that's not a not an issue oh the peak hurts two of our cards it helps one of our cards. It doesn't affect one of our cards. Um, well, it's not great. <laughs> uh, let's do the Bishop into Central Park. They have Angela. That's going to be a decent power push into the peak location. Um, and so we should have done the Bishop into the peak location. Unfortunately, we did not. And so now we are kind of kind of struggling. So we can do strong guy. We can't really do much to kind of dump our hand. And, and I mean, unfortunately, we we're kind of in a in a in a tough spot. And so we can do Mojo. We can do Mojo. We can do Mysterio. But they both feel bad because what if they have a Hobgoblin? All right. So I think we protect our upside in Mojo World. We leave this one kind of open ended and see what they play. Um, we could finish capping it out, but that gives them a really specific amount of information that I don't want them to have necessarily. So let's go with the, the win in Mojo World. I anticipate a Hobgoblin and then we end up leaving. Okay, so they do go with a card in Mojo World. So, okay. Um, our Mojo does pretty decently in Mojo World. Um, it gives us plus six. If they pass here, then they don't get any upside. They could move their Nightcrawler out though, right? Um, so we need to kind of watch out for potentially for that we can discard two cards but that's not going to be enough and so let's not waste the energy on it let's do blade and then mysterio not a great not a great finisher especially if they have something really big that comes down here it's only a five six seven eight nine ten power play so they do move their nightcrawler over uh what else do they have over in the middle location i wonder uh, so we have the mysterio that comes down they have a gamora which does trigger it's a 12 power play but is it enough after everything triggers and reveals. No, it's not. We got really, really lucky. Um, had they had a destroyer, they were going to destroy us. Had they had any, like a hobgoblin, they would have destroyed us here. Uh, we got very, very fortunate against Mr. Brightside, and it looks like they're a good sport about it. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. Whenever locations are restricted, this, this deck loses a lot of its potency. Because it doesn't push high power into one or two lanes, it pushes an average amount of power into all three. And so whenever you can't push that power into them, your your hand starts clogging up, you, you restrict your strong guy, you restrict your bishop, um, you start losing a lot of potency. All right, so next up we have Certified. We have our Angela in our starting hand, which is good. That's one of our main ramp cards. But I don't think we play it on turn two. I think we go for an Okoye first. That way we can buff up all of the cards. We get the most upside from using her. And then we can go with Angela in a different lane. 
and start buffing that one up. I'm thinking probably Monster Metropolis because she does get pretty large. But with seeing Stark Tower, that one does look pretty enticing as well. Because all of our cards there will get plus two power. I think we go with the Stark Tower lane. Monster Metropolis feels decent. Ooh, so they storm it. Interesting, interesting. We will be able to do Scarlet Witch, which is, of course, a gamble. We don't know what that's going to turn into. Could be good. It could be bad. Uh, we just, we don't know. So let's go with the Calling Wing into the Angela lane. That will discard our blade, which we're okay with. We do have one additional discard here. Depending on what we draw into on turn five, maybe we draw into Strong Guy, maybe we draw into Sarah. Um, either way, we do have, we can play both of these on the final turn. And so I think we should be okay. And then if we draw into Strong Guy, it's actually decent in the Onslaught Citadel. And so let's go with a uh, bishop play. Bishop's play doesn't feel incredibly great. They did use Juggernaut into the storm location thinking it was going to lock down. So it pushed our Scarlet Witch over into Stark Tower. So we do look really, really strong over there. We're going to have three cards that get the upside of the plus two power from Stark Tower. And then all we have to worry about is winning one of the other two lanes. And so if they don't invest here, maybe we just go with trying to push into, well, I guess... I guess the Onslaught Citadel now. I was going to say the, the Fisk Tower lane, but uh, well, 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 we just have to play two cards and we would win this location. We could do a Swordmaster and a Maximus, but if they do a leader play, we want to copy the lower power card, but it is only a six power card instead of instead of more. I think we lose this one. The leader play would win them here. It would copy one of our cards here. Um, I think we would probably lose as a result, but we are going to play into it. We're just going to let it see. Um, we're going to tell them we're losing. I anticipate a leader right here, which will take the loss. If I was really, really competitively trying to climb, I would, I would back out here. This is one of those games where you don't have a great advantage. And so I would just back out knowing that they most likely have the leader play. But since I am me, I am going to go ahead and let it play out. I'm going to see. Maybe we get lucky. Probably not, though. And so, ooh, they do an arrow, which moves all of their cards over, which is fine. We didn't need the Stark Tower lane. Um, their Sunspot actually can't buff up too much. We play three cards, so we come up to seven power. I think we win the far left and the far right lane, interestingly enough. Really? So our Scarlet Witch saved us there. It gave us the space to play additional cards, which allowed us to buff up our Bishop. They had hit the Spider-Man into this lane. Otherwise, we would have been com almost completely capped out absolutely phenomenal so let's go ahead and take that me mediocre win and let's see if we can chain it into uh at least one other one all right so next up we have clutter i think i don't have my contacts in i don't have my glasses on so everything's a little bit blurry but i think that says clutter we're gonna go with an angela into the asgard we're just gonna change asgard <laughs> if we can't win it nobody can Let's go ahead and change the Asgard lane. Icebox hit our Angela, so we couldn't drop it on Curve, which feels really, really bad. The Raft is not necessarily what we want to see either. Hmm. Okay, so we could do Calling Wing. Actually, we can do Angela here. And then next turn, we could do something like a Calling Wing and a Blade, or a Swordmaster and a Blade. That's going to get rid of the rest of the cards that we have. So I guess it depends on how many or if they drop cards here. And so it's a Cosmo. Interesting. I mean, it's not the worst, right? We can get a free six cost card. We buff our Angela a few times. Swordmaster's a pretty good, pretty good power push. I'm okay with that. That won't dump our hand, which is what I was worried about. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with filling this one the rest of the way up. We'll get the free six cost card and see what it is. So we get an Odin. Okay. Um, so Odin could re-trigger maybe our Calling Wing. Maybe we play Calling Wing and then Odin to make sure we finish the rest of our, our disc, finish discarding the rest of our cards. Um, so let's do a strong guy over here. We hold Odin for now. Next turn, we can do a Maximus, a Colleen Wing, probably, unless we draw into something better. And then we could re-trigger it with Odin, which would discard another card. Um, it would discard two of our cards, which would empty out our hand. Let's go ahead and snap. I think we feel fairly confident in this playline. We have a lot of power that we can push on the board. Plus, they still have to overcome our power in the raft location. So unless they do a... I mean, this looks like the deck list that we ran yesterday. So unless they do a Professor X here... Oh, they could do a Professor X here, and that completely tanks us. Okay, so the leader play is actually... 
very much appreciated. Um, had they done a Professor X in either of these, that would have really, really restricted uh, the amount of things and cards that we could have dropped. So maybe they did the leader thinking we would play our free Odin last turn, and we just got lucky that that we didn't, uh, that that's not the path that we went with. And so they probably have a destroyer here. They can drop it here. Um, we, they can win this lane, but we'll win both of these uh, pretty heavily. And so let's go ahead and lock that one in. I don't see us having an issue finishing this one off. Our, we are matching up against the really, really good deck list that we ran yesterday. Um, probably one of my favorite deck lists, by the way. It's the ideal control combo. We have the Electro Ramp, you have Infinite, you have Leader, you have Arnold Zola, um, you have Destroyer. But um, I think just our spread power push is going to allow us to have that flexibility where we're going to be able to come up over uh, their power level just a bit. And so we do win the Icebox pretty heavily. We do trigger our strong guy because of the Odin, which was a free six cost card. But if we, but if it wasn't, we probably would have played some power over in Savage Land anyways. Um, and then we are able to reel that in for the win. Let's go ahead and end the video there. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.